Hi everyone, welcome to So What? I hope you're having a great Tuesday so far. We are coming to you live a little bit later than usual today, so I hope some of you who can't normally join us are able to tune in today, and I hope uh, those of you who regularly join us at noon Eastern Time are still along for the ride today. So, appreciate the, you know, flexibility to be able to come to you at different times and hopefully reach uh, some different folks. So today we have a lot to talk about. For those of you who are new to So What, we do a giveaway every single week. And I put together a number of products for today's giveaway because we're going to be talking about working with Sulky Filane Thread. Now, Filane is our 100% acrylic thread. It comes on large spools like this, and it has a really fuzzy texture to it. Can you tell? Can you see that? And this fuzzy texture sort of blooms when you brush it with our filane brush. And what that allows is a really cool thread effect where it mimics faux fur. Um, you can do really, really fluffy designs for dogs, cats, lions, all kinds of animal designs. We also have a pollen collection where it's a bunch of flowers and the center of the flower or where the pollen comes from is what you brush out and it just gives a really cool effect to machine embroidery. Now you can also use filane for big stitch quilting, for regular quilting. Um, I have even uh, given some to my long armor and she finished a couple of quilts for me and it gives the quilt sort of a vintage quality. Um, it's also great for hand sewing. Um, a number of cross stitchers and hand embroiderers have used it and really like the effect that it gives. So it's not just for machine embroidery, but you can really do some cool effects when you are doing machine embroidery with lots of dense uh, stitch areas that you can then fluff out. So I will be getting to that a little bit later, but if you've worked with filane or if you want to work with filane, and you have questions, please put them in the comments so that I can address them during today's episode. And we will hopefully get everybody on board with working with this really fun thread because it does take some getting used to and it does take some specific uh, sort of modifications for your sewing machine because it is a 12 weight thread. And, and if any of you out there are uh, machine embroidery experts, if you will, um, you will know that working with a 12 weight thread for high speed embroidery designs requires a bit of modifications, like I said. So we want to first make sure that the design we've chosen is digitized for 12 weight thread. Because if it is digitized for 40 weight thread, which is a must, much thinner thread, which is what machine embroidery digitizers typically uh, use as sort of their benchmark for designs. If it is a design digitized for 40 weight and you go to use filane just as a substitute, this thread will be too thick for the areas that were previously digitized for 40 weight embroidery thread, okay? So what's gonna happen is your machine is going to try and penetrate sort of the same area over and over again in the design because this thread takes up a lot less space than the space needed for 40 weight thread. So hopefully I'm explaining that well enough. And again, if you do have questions, put them in the comments so that we can address them. I'm gonna go ahead and actually pull up my comments here uh, because they are not in my window, so. There we go. Hi everyone. I was wondering why I wasn't seeing any hellos. There we go. All right, I'm glad that you're with us today. So for all of you commenting, putting your questions in the comments there below the screen, uh, if you are liking, sharing, engaging with this post today, you are eligible for our little gift that um, one lucky 
person is going to win. So like I said, I put together kind of a grouping of products that all help you work with filleting thread. So today's giveaway is a filleting wire brush. What did I do with it? Here it is. Filleting wire brush. You will also get a pack of 116 titanium top stitch needles. And that is what I like to use when I am doing high speed embroidery with filleting thread. You will also get a one yard pack of Sulky Cutaway Plus Stabilizer and a one yard pack of Sulky Solvi Stabilizer. So all of those things together will allow you to create our fun project that we're going to talk about today, which is this great pillow. So the focal point or the center of this pillow is our free Fox Filet design. This is all computerized ma machine embroidery and you can see it's a very large scale design, uses a lot of thread. So I'm gonna be going over this project today, how to create these really cute fringe pillows and how to do the machine embroidery with the filet. So in the description of today's post, you will find a link to a blog post that gives you written instructions for what I'm going to go over today. And it also gives you the link for that free Fox filet design. I also link directly to that design in the description of today's post. You will also see everything linked that I'm going to talk about from our brand new webcast that we will be doing next week. I'll talk about that in a minute. From to all the products that I just mentioned that help you work with filet thread and, and then some. So if you are not seeing the full description for the post, just click on that little see more button and then the entire description will populate and you'll be able to navigate around. All right, so thank you so much for all of your comments so far. Cheryl is already asking, can you wash and dry the product you use, the filleting thread? Yes, you can. Um, I would probably wash that pillow inside out just because you can, but I will say I have done machine embroidery with the filleting. Um, I have, like I said, I also gave it to a long armor and I put that quilt in the washing machine, dried it on just tumble dry low, and everything was fine. Now, I pre-washed that fabric prior to washing it again. So if I'm gonna end up washing my finished quilt, it's not like an art piece, something like that, always wanna make sure to pre-wash that fabric first, then quilt it. Um, you don't want your fabric kind of shrinking up on you and then all of your quilting stitches um, look weird or pop or get out of place, that type of thing. Um, not to mention your blocks or squares will get all wonky um, if your fabric then decides to shrink up on you. So, all right, first things first, I wanna talk about our great sale that's going on right now. It is our Oops sale. So sometimes you may be familiar with these types of sales with other companies as well. Sometimes we have overruns on certain colors um, or you know, just a, a, an abundance of a certain thing uh, taking up space in the warehouse. And we are you know, offering 70% off of these items. Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. Uh, they're fantastic to use. Sometimes we just decide not to carry a certain color anymore. Something like that will go on. So you will find some great, great deals right now at sulky.com. One of them I'm going to go over later, which is this large can of Sulky KK2000. Now, absolutely nothing wrong with this. It's just a larger can than we normally carry. And it is 6.35 ounces. Our regular uh, standard can, if you will, of Sulky KK2000 is 4.25, I wanna say. So you're getting more product in here. And right now, during this 70% off sale, this is only $14.99. The smaller can is actually $19.99. So stock up, get you some KK2000. I talk about it on every single So What because I use it for 
every single project that I do pretty much. So it's a great temporary spray adhesive. It's air soluble, which I love. It just kind of dissipates into the air after about 24 to 48 hours. Um, it's just a fantastic temporary spray adhesive. I even use it for appliques sometimes in lieu of fusible web. If I'm doing a smaller applique project and I know I'm gonna get through the whole thing in one sewing session, I'll just spray the back of my fabric with KK2000 and then do my applique stitching. So, I, like I said, I use it for a number of things. Anyways, so great sale, silky.com. You'll find lots and lots of stuff, um, some of which may be your favorite project products, like I said, like the KK, and you're even getting more of it, so great deal. All right, another thing I wanna talk about, and I started talking about this last week. Next week I will be talking about it some more because it's happening next Tuesday. This is our first free webcast of 2021. That's right, it's entirely free to attend. It's like taking a class in the comfort of your own home, being able to interact with the instructor, with the host, um, being able to interact with each other in our live chat feature, uh, all kinds of things, everything you have come to know and love about Sulky webinars in the past, but now they're even more interactive. So if you are used to attending our webinars in the past where you would see a PowerPoint presentation and you would hear the instructor over audio, now you get to actually see the instructor's face. All right, so free webcast. This one is with Julie Treeb of Designs by Juju. And give me a thumbs up and show the love for Designs by Juju, okay? Love, love, love this machine embroidery design company. Julie is extremely talented, does a lot of in the hoop projects that are adorable, and this is one of them. So she created these key fobs, and this little key fob design um, is, is specifically for the Sulky webcast. And along with it, she created this really beautiful font collection with the letters inside of the little um, sort of floral filigree-ish type design. It fits the key fob perfectly. We're going to learn how to merge those designs into one stitch out. We're going to learn tips for working with software. So all of you who want to kind of expand your machine embroidery capabilities and get into the world of software, she's going to provide lots of information about that. But if you don't have so software, don't want to get software, or don't use the software that Julie does, don't fear because you will be able to use the techniques she's talking about, apply them to the software that you use, or she's also going to talk about doing all of these techniques without software right into the screen of your embroidery machine. So there will be lots and lots of education from Julie herself. I mean, who better to learn all this stuff from than the person who actually digitized all these designs. So another great thing is we're going to learn the correct needle and thread and stabilizer combination for a perfect stitch out. And of course we will be working with all great silky high quality products and you will learn tips for producing perfect lettering designs. You know, sometimes if you go real small with, um, with a word or a monogram, um, it starts to become unreadable. So I asked Julie to really give us tips for how to make all those lettering designs look great, whether we're making a small, small quilt label or something a little bit larger scale like these key fobs. So be sure to register for the webinar. Like I said, it will be next Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Not to be confused with our so what's. A lot of people think that these are the sulky webinars and they are not. So if you are one of those people, definitely click, click the link and register for the webcast and then you will see the difference. The webcast is really, like I said, like a course, like an online class that you would pay big bucks for. Um, and here on So What, we're just hanging out, giving tips and ideas, um, providing fun project inspiration. So 
it all works together, but I really want you to have the experience of attending a Sulky webcast because there's really nothing like it. It's going to be great. Okay, so just a little bit of photo montage of uh, some webcast techniques. So here you can see we're working with this really cool sparkly vinyl to make these key fobs. And, you know, you could use this for your keys. You could also, you know, put it on your bag. You could use it as a little luggage tag. Um, but you can see how just how nicely that stitches out onto that sparkle vinyl, which is a little bit thicker material. So we're also going to learn how to get a perfect stitch out on this type of fabric. And you really can't get more fun than sparkly vinyl. So here we are showing it on a bag and you just create it on these little sort of D-ring clips. So that's really fun. And then I don't know if you could see it there, but look at the little heart snap. Love that little personalized detail. So that just makes it really fun. A great gift idea for Valentine's Day um, or any holiday really, these would just be great. So, and here is what the kit looks like. I wanted to bring this up because kits are already going fast. Now, normally when we do a webcast, we wait until the day of to uh, bring you the kit, but we knew this one was gonna be super popular and we thought some of you might wanna have it on hand for the webcast. Now, it's not meant to be a traditional sew along, so you do not have to have your kit in hand at the time of the webcast. The webcast is really kind of an overview of the project and where you will learn all these techniques that I spoke about. And then when your kit arrives, you can watch and rewatch, rewind, pause, all that good stuff, and uh, play the webcast again and get all of those tips, you know, kind of refresh your memory on what Julie was talking about. So if you want to get your kit now and hopefully have it in hand by next week, um, it's cutting it a little bit close. So head on over to sulky.com. The special price for this is $34.99. It has almost a $75 value. So grab that while you can um, to make sure that, you know, you get yours before we sell out. Okay, so that's the kit. Like I said, the vinyl fabric is included. You get that really cool sparkly white and then a pink and a turquoise. So again, great colors for Valentine's Day and even for Mother's Day coming up. These would make great little gift ideas. All right, so let's get to the other project at hand, which is our cute little... Uh, foxy fringe pillows here. This is a trio of pillows. You could make one, you could make as many as you want. Um, the techniques are all gonna be the same. Now, if you don't want to use the cute little foxy filet design, you can certainly create these pillows using any machine embroidery design that you like, um, or no embroidery at all. You could use decorative stitching, you could do hand sewing, you could do sashiko work. The point is that we're going to go over the techniques for creating uh, this pillow and then you can apply that to whatever it is you want to create. So we will learn how to make that great little fringe um, and all that good stuff. But I'm going to start off with the machine embroidery since that is our free project going on right now. Um, it's a free embroidery design, like I said, it's called Foxy Filet. And what we're going to do is hoop our stabilizer first. We are not going to hoop our fabric with the stabilizer because the pillows are made out of fleece. And fleece is, as you know, a very lofty fabric. First off, we probably couldn't even hoop it because it's so lofty. And secondly, if we tried, we might actually do what's called hoop burn, meaning burning uh, the hoop indentation into the fabric fibers. And it's very difficult to recover from that. So to avoid all of those problems, we are going to do hoopless embroidery. And the reason that we're starting with Cutaway Plus is because it's a heavier weight tearaway stabilizer, or excuse me, cutaway stabilizer that's going to stay with the fleece throughout washings, 
wearings, all that good stuff. In order to stick our fabric to the Cutaway Plus, once it is in the hoop, we're going to use dun -da -da -da, my favorite little Sulky KK2000. So, you will hoop the Cutaway Plus, and like I said, this is a large scale design. It's going to take a larger hoop, okay? All the parameters for the hoop that you need are in the blog post that is linked in the begin or in the description of today's post. So make sure you head on up to the description and then that'll link you directly to the blog post with all the particulars and the things that I'm going to forget. <laughs> all right, so here we have the KK2000. Now, like I said, this one is a little bit bigger than maybe the one with the green cap that you know and have on hand. So get yourself this big one while it is on sale it's a great great deal oh and here we have the large can again so you will hoop your cutaway plus in your large hoop spray it with the kk2000 inside the inner hoop ring and then you will put your fleece fabric on top now if you noticed in the finished pillow photo, you will see that the fox is just centered directly in the middle of the fabric. So what you can do is fold your fleece into quarters and place it onto the hoop and then just unfold your quarters and smooth it out nice and flat. Make sure that you're not stretching the fleece since fleece is a little bit stretchy and you're basically good to go. The only other thing we need on our hoop is a layer of Sulky Salvi. Now, we use Sulky Salvi as a topper when we can use a water-soluble stabilizer. If we're working with a fabric that is not going to be water tolerant, okay, can't get wet like a really nice wool or something if you wanted to do pillows out of that, you would want to use our heat away clear film, okay? that disappears with heat from an iron. Now you don't put your iron directly on top of it and watch it fizzle away. You really just can come close to it and it will kind of fizzle away along the seam lines or along your embroidery edge and then you can kind of just peel up the rest of it and it's gone. All right, so for this, since fleece is water tolerant, we're going to use the salvi as a topper. So you will just float the salvi over the top of the fleece, then put your uh, hoop onto the machine, and if you want a little bit of extra protection, making sure that all of your layers are uh, secured in the hoop, you can do a baste in the hoop function on your machine on your embroidery machine and that will baste all three of those layers together and they're not going to go anywhere for your stitch out the other thing you can do is actually spray your salvi a little bit with the kk2000 and put it onto your fabric right side that will also work then when you go to wash away your salvi the KK actually comes with the salvi because you sprayed it onto the salvi. It's a beautiful thing. All right, I know I'm gonna get some questions about this, so keep them coming and I will stop for questions in just a bit. All right, so now we've got, oops. Now we've gotta talk about the thread. Okay, so our fabric is sandwiched basically between the Cutaway Plus and the salvi on top and it's on the machine. So for a thread, like I said, we are using the filane thread for most of this design. It does use two colors of Sulky Poly Deco. That is our 40 weight polyester thread. Now you really wanna pay attention to the color chart and make sure when the color gets to the Poly Deco that you are switching your thread as well as your needle, all right? For filane, we're going to use that size 116 titanium top stitch needle. And for the poly deco, we can use an 8012 jersey needle because we are embroidering a fleece fabric that has a bit of a stretch to it. 
So the Jersey needle is going to move those fabric fibers aside to create room for a stitch rather than trying to pierce through that fleece fabric, which could sometimes cause a hole or a snag, something like that. So two sets of needles, the, the 116 and the 8012, a top stitch, and then a uh, jersey. And then in the bobbin, we're going to use sulky bobbin thread. Sulky bobbin thread is a 60 weight thread. So it is thinner than the fillet and it is thinner than the poly deco. And it is going to ensure that we have a nice balanced stitch. And that means that some of our top thread is actually gonna be seen along the wrong side of the embroidery. Now, normally when we talk about a balanced stitch, we don't want either thread showing on either side. So our top thread is seen from the top, our bottom thread is seen from the bottom. For machine embroidery, it's actually digitized and it's actually better if your top thread shows ever so slightly on the wrong side. That really actually means that you have a nice, pretty balanced stitch. So this thread collection that I'm showing right here is our Fur Filet collection. And we curated all these spools that have all the colors of fur, really. Um, different types of animals, from lions to dogs to cats. This is a great collection if you love working with those types of designs, if you like to do a lot of animals or fur, right? Now, I will say with this fox design, some of these colors are not the exact color that was used uh, when digitizing that design. Now you can either grab up the Fur Filet collection because you do get a great deal by buying all 12 of these colors versus buying the spools individually and just come close. You know, you can choose that lower right brown and the middle yellow and maybe another brown or cream and create a really pretty fox. But I will say, consult the uh, color chart for the design if you want to get the exact colors like this orange is not in the fur, fur excuse me the fur filet collection of thread but it's what's featured in the fox that I'm showing you right now so just be aware if you grab up that fur collection the colors are not going to be exactly the same as they are for the fox but you can come pretty darn close and then you'll have lots of thread on hand to create other types of animal designs. Um, Embroidery Library has a great collection of thread of, excuse me, of designs that uh, work well with heavyweight thread like this 12 weight filet. Um, lots of cat designs, um, a really pretty lion that you can brush out the mane and it gets really, really fluffy and really neat. And then I do want to mention that the face of that lion is all done in rayon. So you really need to be mindful when you, you are switching thread colors to know, okay, now I'm back to 40 weight. I've got to change my needle and change my thread. Now I'm back to 12 weight. I've got to change my needle and I've got to change my thread. Now, the great thing about organ needles, when you are switching between needle sizes and types, and this is why I love organ needles so much. These are all available at sulky.com. When you are swapping out your needles, this has this corrugated cardboard inside here. So what you can do is the needle that you just used, just place it a few you know, steps to the left or right away from the other needles, and then you will know, okay, that's the needle I have to go back to. Because I am notorious for taking my needle out, putting it in a pin cushion, then I swap my needle and my thread, then I get to where the point of the design where I need that 116 again, and I have to get a magnifying glass out to find it in my pin cushion. <laughs> so this makes it just a little bit easier. I will say though that the titanium 116s, the top stitch ones that I'm talking about today, they actually don't come in this packaging. They come in um, a little plastic box type packaging. So just be, be aware of that as well. All right, so I'm sure I'm gonna get lots of questions about working with the filet, so keep them coming and we will go over them. 
Um, here is the photo of those top stitch titanium needles. So another thing you can do is just mark the tip of your needle um, just along the needle shaft. You can put a little dot of fabric marker or a permanent marker on there and then you will know that that's the one that you just used for this design if you forget and you need to go back to it. So. These are really great needles. I know a lot of people are a little concerned about working with titanium needles um, because if your needle breaks or actually it's really hard for your needle to break because it's titanium. Um, so I've heard from some people that they will they used a titanium needle or it's always that they heard that someone used the titanium needle and um, it wouldn't break during a certain technique or with a bunch of fabric layers it actually caused their machine to kind of jam up on them whereas if the needle could have broken more easily the machine would have run its course and not have gotten into a jam or something like that so i have heard that happening but i will say it's never happened to me um, the reason i like working with a titanium needle when i'm working with a super duper heavyweight thread like filane is because of that strength because it's really strong and not going to break on you and a lot of the times when you're working with a really heavyweight thread you also have heavyweight fabric paired with it now fleece isn't really i mean it's not like a super strong fabric but it is loftier and heavier so i just find greater success with this titanium top stitch needle and of course it's large enough that that thread can pass through the eye without wanting to drag um, which will eventually end up snapping that thread if the needle is too small okay phew so there is the fox embroidered in the hoop and you can see there is a topper and that basting stitch is all around the perimeter of the design which is keeping everything nice and sandwiched together for embroidery so it looks great and this topper is actually going to do dual duty in protecting our fabric when we actually brush the fillet out as well so i'm going to address some questions that i am seeing coming in and then we will work our way through the construction of the pillow. Okay. All right. Some people are saying they're having a hard time watching the feed today. Um, I will say we are having some weather here in Colorado. Um, much like a lot of the United States right now, we're having a big snowstorm. So um, hopefully the feed is okay. Um, if not, if it's blipping out for you, you may have greater success watching after the live feed ends. You can just head on to our Sulky Facebook page and watch it in its entirety. Okay. All right. So I was just talking about the needles flow and maybe this came in before I was talking about them, but I do like to use that 116 titanium top stitch needle and that's what I use for the filet. Then for the portion of the design where I'm using the poly deco, which is 40 weight thread, lots thinner than the 12 weight, I will switch to an 80 12 jersey needle. And I'm only using jersey because the pillow is made out of fleece. All right. So if you're making a pillow out of denim, use a jeans needle or even a universal um, or even a top stitch um, or even an embroidery. There are a lot of times where you can switch between needle types um, depending on the fabric you're using, even if you're doing machine embroidery. So just because you're doing machine embroidery does not mean you have to use an embroidery needle, okay? So an embroidery needle actually has a very slight ball point to it. So if you're embroidering something like faux leather or uh, like I said, denim or um, canvas, I would use a top stitch needle because those needles are extra pointy at the tip, okay? They're not gonna have that slight ball point 
that an embroidery needle would have. And so sometimes I just have better luck with a top stitch needle. Or if I'm working with metallic thread, I don't use an embroidery needle. I use a metal needle, organ metal needle, or a top stitch needle. So it's, it's you know, the sewing industry makes it a little difficult for us to decipher when, what to use when. So Fortunately, that's why I have a job and why I get to communicate with you all and use my experience to help you uh, find the best solution for your projects. Okay. Elizabeth is saying she has bought quite a bit of the filleting thread. She's found a few designs digitized for it. It's very important to read the description of the design. There are so many times where I find what I think is the most perfect design and I fall in love with it and it's just not gonna work for the project. If I have a lighter weight fabric and I found a really beautiful dense design, there are things I can do stabilizer wise to make it work, um, but you know I might just end up struggling through it. So you really need to be mindful of the description of the design that you're buying especially if you're working with heavyweight thread. Make sure it is labeled heavy or brushed or fur. Some designs are just labeled like blank fur design. And then you can look in the description and see that it's digitized for a 12 weight thread or something comparable. So make sure when you're choosing your design that you're not working with a design that was digitized for 40 weight thread and trying to stuff this heavyweight thread into all of those spaces that were created by the digitizer because it's just not gonna work. You're gonna end up with so much thread, your needle is going to try to penetrate it, it is probably going to break on you, um, and you'll have just a total mess. So another thing I want to mention that we did a, um, serger tote a it's called the, the market tote and we did a free webinar on working with a serger but also using our pollen collection and showcasing our fillet thread on the tote so you learned a little bit about working with your serger a little bit about working with fillet a little bit about machine embroidery it was a very informative webinar you can find it on our education platform which is sewingonline.sulky.com head on over there create an account it's free to do so you'll find our paid video casts there you'll find our free webinars there you will find the keepsake key fobs webcast there so that's where you will register for everything but take a look at our serger smarts webinar with katrina walker because uh she goes over uh working with this filleting thread and just because you registered for that you get a free embroidery design that features filleting thread it's a little ice cream design. It has three little scoops of ice cream on it, on a little sugar cone. And you can use that design and practice with the thread. Practice, 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 and get to know the thread and how your machine reacts to it. Because every machine is gonna have different features and different things that you need to do. A couple of things to remember. Slow down your machine, okay? Um, we don't want super high-speed embroidery where we're building up heat with the needle and all that. The filleting is not going to like it. Secondly, use a larger needle, like I mentioned, the 116 size needle for the filleting. Another thing to remember is turn off the function on your machine that says auto thread cut. It'll say something like that, okay? Um, typically when you load your machine, you'll get a screen that pops up that's asking you, do you want to baste around the design? Do you want to baste around the hoop? Do you want to color sort? Do you want this, 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 that, this before you hit go or start, right? That is where you will tell the machine, do not cut my thread before and after each color stop. The reason you're going to do that is because when your machine auto cuts the beginning and end of your thread, it's bringing your top thread underneath and kind of creating a little knot 
or tying it off to secure it. What that's going to do is put this bumpy piece of 12 weight thread on the underside of your work. And that is just even more that your needle has to go over or penetrate to create your nice, beautiful design. So we want to eliminate bulkiness. We want to eliminate knots. We want to eliminate heavy, dense stitch areas where our needle might struggle with that heavyweight thread. So definitely make sure you have turned that function off. And what's going to happen is your machine will stitch out a little, a little ways and you'll have a little thread tail. Um, most machines, um, I should say newer models probably, will stop after about 10 or 12 stitches and actually tell you to trim that little thread tail so it doesn't get caught in the rest of your stitching. If your machine does not do that, you will want to stay by your machine, just manually stop it after about 10 or 12 stitches, clip that little thread tail, and then continue with the embroidery. So, like I said, the thread really requires some special handling, but once you kind of get used to it, and you understand how your machine sews with it and all of the things that you need to do, it'll start becoming second nature and you'll be able to create these really, really cool faux fur thread effects. So I think you'll really enjoy it. Okay, Roxy is asking, if you use a design for 40 weight, can you change the density to accommodate 12 weight? So, I mean, the short answer is yes, of course, but you need software and you need to understand digitizing techniques because you need to remove a good amount of those stitches. Um, let's just, I'm just going to make up some numbers here, but let's say you have a little square area and if you're using 40 weight, it takes... 200 passes of thread to fill that little square. Now with filleting, it might take 60. Okay, so it's going to require you to re manually remove all the other stitches so that you get coverage with only the 12 weight. Does that make sense? Now, there are some, of course, exceptions to that rule. Now, I have worked with a design that was digitized for 30 weight thread. A lot of red work designs, um, quilting, outline quilting designs. Some of these you can find digitized for 30 weight thread. And usually those designs are line art designs. They don't have any fill stitches to them at all. I have had success using the 12 weight filane for some of those designs. Um, there was one case where I tried to use one of those designs and there was a little bit of fill stitch. It was the dot of an eye. And I had thread breakage in the little dot. And I just clipped my thread, went back a couple of stitches, and I slowed my machine all the way down. And I ended up getting through it, but it was a big little, a big little, it was a big chunk of thread in my otherwise, you know, pretty line art design. So another thing I could do, could have done, was just skip over the dot and the eye and then just sewed a little French knot right there. And that would have been easy peasy. So again, always do a test stitch out, even if you're just testing out a portion of the design or the thickest part of the design. Um, the design area that has, you know, the most amount of fill stitches, um, that type of thing to see if it's going to work for that design, that stabilizer, that thread, and the needle combination that you've chosen. Okay. All right. Barbara says she has the filane thread but hasn't used it yet. The fox looks adorable. This is the perfect opportunity for you to use it. Grab up that free design and, um, yeah. Patty's asking, what is the needle size when you are just doing free motion? Okay, so we actually have a blog post about using filane for free motion work. Um, and that person used a, I want to say a 9014 
top stitch needle. Now, for me, I think that's a little bit too small, um, but if you're not a speed demon with your free motion, um, it's probably going to work okay for you. So you might wanna get a pack of 9014s and a pack of 116s and do some test stitches and just kinda of see what works best for your speed and again, your fabric combination and all that good stuff. Okay, so we're going to get to the pillow construction here. It's this really cute pillow that has fringe on it. So if you've never made your own fr fringe, you'll see just how easy it is. And the reason that we're working with fleece here is because it's not going to fray. So we can use or we can cut fringe out of the fleece and we don't have to finish the edges. So that's really fun. And you could use any no fray fabric for this technique. And you could use, somebody was talking about making a tote bag, uh, working with the, or using the fox design as embellishment. You could add fringe to the outside edge of your tote bag in the same way that we're going to add the fringe to this bag. So if you're working with, let's say a faux leather or even a cork fabric, you could create fringe in this exact way and then use it as a trim piece for a bag or um, like a cosmetic bag or something that would be really cute. All right, so real quick, Linda's asking, how long does the sale run? Our great sale uh, that's going on right now is uh, valid until the 31st, okay? So you have a little while to take advantage, um, but definitely browse around because there are some great deals to be had. Okay, whoops. Okay, if I haven't gotten to your question, I apologize. There's so much to go through. So if um, I didn't get to your question and you really need something answered immediately this afternoon, if you're in the middle of a project, let's say, um, please reach out to us at info at sulky.com. We are always here to answer your questions via email and it's really, really a priority and um, important to Sulky to uh, make sure that you're having the best experience. So we are happy to assist you that way. All right, so, ooh, Dawn is saying suede would be cool too. Yeah, that's a really great idea. So let's get to our cute pillow. I just have to, um, squint my eyes and find the proper image to start off the tutorial. So as you recall, we have our design, right? All stitched, and this is the wrong side of the design. Uh, let me just make sure I'm caught up here. Okay, so organ needles, here we go. Sorry, bear with me just a moment. These were the needles we were talking about. All right, so we have our design stitched out you're gonna remove your cutaway plus from the hoop. After all, that is the only thing that is still in the hoop or that was ever in the hoop. So remove that from the hoop and then remove your basting stitches and keep your solvy intact. Because when you go to brush out your fox, the solvy is gonna protect the fleece from the wire bristles of your brush and you won't get any residual fuzz happening along the perimeter of your fox. Genius, right? Now, in this picture you will see, this, was, uh, this sample was created by Katrina Walker and she used a really stiff sort of nail brush, right, to brush out her fillet. I really prefer using the wire brush um, it's what it was designed for, and you really get a lot, a lot of fluff um, out of the thread when you're using the wire brush. So I just wanted to mention that. But either way, whatever you use to brush out your fillet thread, the solvy is going to be your best friend. So don't start removing it before you have brushed out your thread. Once you have, you can go ahead and remove it. Now, with a, den a dense, dense design like this, you can pretty much just tear away the solvy from the design perimeter and it's gonna come out 
because your design is so dense, it has so much thread in it, um, you really don't need to run it under water to remove it like you normally would um, on a different type of design. So if you find that you tore it away and there's little bits that kind of aren't, uh, that, that haven't torn away, you can just get a Q-tip or cotton swab, wet it under running water and kind of run it across, you know, dab it across those areas along um, the outer edge stitches and it'll just dissolve off um, and it will be gone forever. All right, so there's a picture of that little filet brush, really inexpensive. And again, for all of you commenting, liking, sharing today's post, we have a great giveaway. It includes this filet wire brush, as well as a pack of the 116 titanium needles, a pack of the Sulky Cutaway Plus, a pack of the Sulky Salvi, and basically all you need is the thread now because you will also have that free design download. So. That is today's giveaway for one lucky winner who is engaging with the post today. All right, so this is the wrong side of the design. So you'll wanna cut away your cutaway plus um, as close to the design you know, as possible, really. You can leave a border like you see here, and Katrina just used some pinking shears to make that nice and tidy. You can do the same. So this is actually the wrong side of the design. And you can see just how much of the filet thread you can see from the wrong side. So yes, this is what it is supposed to look like. And she used white sulky bobbin thread. So this is a balanced stitch for this design. Okay, so then we're going to round the corners of the pillow. Rounded corners are just so much easier to attach a piece of trim than square corners. So that's really why we're rounding them here. Why not make it easy on ourselves? So just get a plate or an old CD. Anybody have CDs anymore? Um, an old DVD, something round. Um, and go ahead and round off your corners. And then we're gonna make the fringe. Now, it is so easy to make fringe especially if you have a rotary cutter and a ruler. If you don't have a rotary cutter, you can certainly draw lines using your ruler, making sure that your lines are equidistant. I believe this is half inch fringe. Um, again, all the instructions are in the link to our blog post that is in the description of today's post. Um, so if you don't have a rotary cutter, you can certainly just use a removable fabric marker, draw your lines on the fleece, and then cut. Now you have to leave a border at the top because the border at the top that is not cut through is going to be what we sew to the pillow edge. So I think this has about a one inch border to it. Um, again, exact dimensions are in the blog post. So consult. And you can see Katrina even put all four strips together for all four sides of the pillow and cut through all of them at once. You cannot get easier than this. So if you're working with suede, faux leather, another no fray fabric, you can do the same thing here. Make sure that your rotary blade is nice and sharp and that you are leaving that border. You might find it easier to actually draw a line along that border to make sure that you stop cutting there. Um, especially if you're working with a rotary cutter, it can be just second nature to just slide all the way up the ruler and then boom there goes your fringe and you'll have to recut the piece so that's how easy it is so then you're going to have your fringe and you're going to sew it to the perimeter of your pillow so make sure all your fringe is facing inward because once we put the pillow backing on and turn it right side out then our fringe is going to be exposed and super pretty. Now this is really long fringe, but it looks so neat when it's on this larger scale pillow. You could certainly do um, narrower fringe if you like um, and just kind of have fun with it. All right, so once that's pinned on there, um, then you're gonna baste it in place. And after that, Katrina just used a bunch of painter's tape 
to make sure that all those fringe pieces were not going to go anywhere in the next step. You don't want one piece going, you know, outside of your seam line by accident, and then you have to rip that part out, and what a bummer. So just to avoid that, make sure that you've taped down all of your little fringes. And then this is a simple envelope closure for a pillow. There's no zipper involved. We are not turning right side out and then sewing an opening cl closed. Um, this makes it really easy to insert a pillow form and take it out and wash it, that type of thing. So this is a really simple envelope closure. You're going to take two pieces to create the pillow back. And you basically just fold both edges so that they overlap and they have a nice kind of folded finished edge. So place your first rectangle with the folded edge and then you'll place your second or I'm sorry, the, the one edge is folded, your second one doesn't have to be for obvious reasons because you're not going to see it. Now we're going to sew the perimeter and that is going to sandwich our fringe in place. So after sewing the perimeter, then you can trim it up so that all of your edges are rounded just like the front of the pillow. And then it is just a matter of, oh, this is the trimming, sorry, the trimming of the edges to make sure everything's nice and even. Then it's just a matter of turning it right side out through your envelope closure and you have your finished pillows. So I think that fringe looks so neat. You can double up your fringe. You can do one layer of fringe. You can do three layers of fringe. You can be as fringy as you want and you can use a print, you can use a solid color. Like I said, you can feature a totally different design on your pillows if you prefer. If you wanna make some Valentine pillows coming up. Um, a fleece pillow is honestly my children's favorite. They kind of fight over them. <laughs> but let's be real, they kind of fight over everything. All right, so there's been a lot of um, questions coming in. A lot of people saying, yep, this is great for a kid's birthday, grandkids' birthday, Valentine's Day, like I said. Um, you know, my kids, they're so spoiled with uh, sewn things because I get to make lots of samples, but as they should be, right? Um, but they have car pillows, okay? And this would make such a cute little car pillow. You could make it large or small. Um, personalize it for their interests. If they like a fox, you're in luck. Um, and adding that faux fur technique, kids really love that. Anything they can kind of pet or, you know, it gives them that kind of tactile um, stimulation. It's just, it's great all around. Plus, so cute. Okay. Linda is asking, does the design come reversed or do we have to do that on our own? Yes, so if you want to make pill a pillow set like Katrina did here, you'll see two foxes are facing one direction and the other is facing in, okay? So if you want to do that as well, you will need to reverse that on your machine screen. So just mirror image the design um, right there on your machine screen and you'll be fine. All right, and Debbie is saying, put layered hearts behind the fox. So cute. You can add a name, you can add a monogram, you can really personalize it to the recipient if you want. So, ooh, Barbara, good question. Okay, we talked about this last week and everybody loved it. So let's just recap. On the sulky spray, when you spray it in the hoop, does it make the hoop sticky? So it can. Um, sometimes I just, if, if the hoop gets sticky, I just make a point to not touch it to anything. And a lot of the times the spray will seriously just dissolve in the air. Like I said, it's air soluble. Um, if you find that, you know, you put your fleece on there or you put a fabric on there and it left kind of a residue on your hoop. Some people were saying they've used rubbing alcohol just on a cotton swab and it takes it right off. 
Somebody else actually said hand sanitizer. We'll do the same thing. I guess it's so similar to rubbing alcohol anyways. So that's probably why that works. And also you can make kind of like a hoop guard. And if you're all familiar with Embroider Shop, um, S-H-O-P-P-E, uh, Xandra Shaw of Embroider Shop actually created a tutorial on her website for how to create a hoop ring or um, I can't remember what she actually calls it, but um, basically you take like a strip of cardboard, let's say, and you kind of form it into a circle or into your hoop shape. And once you have your stuff hooped, you will put your little hoop guard, that's what she calls it, hoop guard, um, inside that inner hoop ring and spray inside of the cardboard. Then remove your cardboard, place your fabric, and you don't get any overspray onto your hoop or onto um, your cutting mat or other materials. So she has a whole tutorial on that on her website if you want to create your own hoop guard um, with her guidance. So great question. And again, this big can on sale right now. Great deal. $14.99. And like I said, the other smaller can is $19.99. So why not get the larger one and get a couple more ounces um, and have it last a little bit longer. Okay. Kathy's loving the fringe on the pillows. I know. I love it. It is, uh, there are a few layers of fringe and it really just adds something cool to an otherwise very simple, very basic pillow construction. Um, and adding that fringe really doesn't add anything complicated to this pillow. Um, but it's really just putting another little spin on it and it makes it really takes it to like designer level. So if you're adding embroidery, why not add another special touch like some fringy trim? Okay. Ooh, hey, Katrina's actually with us, everyone. I'm so glad. Katrina is the designer of this project. She created this fringy pillow uh, uh, tutorial. So thanks for joining, Katrina. And as always, Katrina is here to help out and has been answering some of your questions. So much appreciated, Katrina, and great to see you. <laughs> um, and yes, she says that spray will evaporate off, but you know, sometimes I find if, if it does touch a fabric or something like that, or you get some dust on there before it evaporates, then it might get a little bit sticky. But again, easy to get off. Okay. Oh, okay. We have um, some spammers in the comments, so it's a little distracting. Apologies for that. We try to catch that while it's going on. Um. Oh, Betsy, thank you so much. She says, Katrina is so creative, just like Ellen on this sulky program. I uh, appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Yes, don't listen to this person who is, is um, commenting. Oh, thank you, Lori. She says, Embroider Shop calls it a hoop mask. Hoop mask. Thank you. I knew I had that wrong. Thought I was getting there, but. <laughs> okay. Yes, there's a spammer in the comments. Apologies. We will um, try to block them. Okay. Lots of people asking, can they rewatch? They missed a little bit of the program. And yes, absolutely. So after the live feed ends here momentarily, um, you can head to our Facebook page or stay right where you are and you'll be able to rewatch, pause, you know, all those good things. And uh, again, uh, our freebie today or our giveaway for one lucky winner who is commenting, asking questions, engaging with the post today. Um, it's a big old prize package. So we've got our filet wire brush. We've got our 116 titanium organ needles. We've got our cutaway plus and our sulky salvi. So you will have everything you need except for the thread uh, to create your foxy fringe pillows. So 
It's a great giveaway today. Make sure you're commenting, liking, sharing. Make sure that you've actually liked the Sulky Facebook page because that's how I will reach out to you. And if you haven't liked our page, then I won't be able to message you that, that you've won. So be sure and check and make sure that you've liked the page as well. All right. Lots of questions. Again, if I'm not getting to your question, please reach out to us at info at sulky.com and uh, we will get back to you as soon as we can. Okay, someone is asking where is the ice cream design? Okay, so if you're familiar with our webcasts, our video casts, or our legacy webinars, they are now hosted on a new education platform. It's called Sewing Online. Dot sulky dot com. And if you go to register for our Keepsake Key Fobs webcast, which is happening next week at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, if you head on over to register for that, you can also look for our Serger Smarts webinar. It's called a legacy webinar because it is one that has happened in the past. And Katrina Walker is the special guest for that webinar. And the giveaway, because we always have a freebie with each webinar that we do, webcast, videocast, what have you. Um, for this webcast, uh, you'll actually be getting a brand new exclusive in the hoop, or excuse me, freestanding lace design from Julie from Designs by Juju. So that is the freebie for this webcast. But for the uh, Serger Smarts, legacy webinar, the freebie was a little ice cream design and it's sewn in the filet thread. So it's going to take a couple of steps for you, but once you've registered for the keepsake key fobs, browse around the site, find the Serger Smarts web webinar, and then download that ice cream design. And you can use it, like I said, to practice working with this filet thread and then to go personalize lots of cute things with ice cream cones. So again, Keepsake Key Fobs webcast happening next Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. It is on that education platform. So sewingonline.sulky.com. I link directly to the place to register for the webcast. Again, it's free to attend. Um, and once you sign up, you will get that freestanding lace heart design from Designs by Juju. So just a little bonus for registering and joining us. Um, and also, again, the kit for next week's webcast is the Keepsake Key Fobs webcast kit. It comes with all of this stuff, okay? Including that really, really neat vinyl fabric and that sparkly vinyl fabric. So you can create at least six key fobs from the uh, materials in this kit you'll have enough um, of those little D rings to create six, okay? Um, and again, all these, these three vinyl fabric colors are included so you can really have fun with it, create some great little gifties. So check that out at sulky.com. That's where you can get the kit. And I think that you guys will really enjoy it next week. So thanks all for joining me. Again, if I haven't gotten, your, gotten to your question, Feel free to email us, and I will also try to respond to your questions in the comments. So um, I really appreciate all of you joining in and helping everybody else out. That's what we are here for, too, is this community that we have built here at So What. I love being able to um, just talk to you all and have this time with you, and I always learn something from new from you as well. I hear a lot that people say, I'm always learning something new from you, and the feeling is mutual. So I really enjoy this time that I get to spend with you. Look out for another So What next week. We will be joining together on Facebook again right before our webcast begins at 2 o'clock, so be sure to join us if you have the afternoon free. And if you cannot join us live for the webcast next week, just know, just like all of our webinars and video casts, you can always watch afterwards on demand. Okay, so if you register, it will um, go into your personal library on our education site, and that's where you can access it in the future. You can watch it over and over again as many times as you want and access all of the freebies and printables and fun things like that, and also ask questions there. So. Um, if you can't join us live, know that you still have an opportunity 
and you will still definitely be able to create your keepsake key fobs. So tune in next week for another So What? We're going to go over those key fobs in more detail. And in the meantime, I hope you have fun creating your fringy, foxy, filleting pillows featuring that really cute fox. Um, it's just so cute. And thanks, Katrina, for joining us. That was a pleasant surprise. All right, everybody. Have a great rest of your day, and I will see you next week.